Hello lovely and welcome to a TTC vlog. I'm starting this vlog off a little bit differently because I wanted to take a moment to catch you up with what has already happened and what is going to be happening in this vlog. So last Friday, Manny and I went to our fertility specialist and we got our genetic testing done. I was supposed to get my catheter check this done, but we ended up not being able to do it because both doctors were busy doing other procedures. So they rescheduled it for this week. I'm actually going tomorrow morning, which is exactly why I wanted to start vlogging today. She did tell me that the genetic testing is going to take a couple of weeks at least before the results can come back. And with that, it's going to let us know exactly what path we're able to take. So basically it was explained to me that if Banny and I are genetic carriers for like a disease, they will have to do IVF rather than an IUI because they will have to make sure that the embryo doesn't have that disease that we're both carriers for. We're praying to God that that's not the case. We're praying that we don't have any genetic genetic disorders and that we're not carriers for any kind of diseases or anything like that. I guess not disease, but we're just praying that we are not carriers so that we can continue to move forward with IUIs because that is what treatment plan I really, really want to try first before moving forward with anything else. I am still not sure if I will even move into IVF, if that's even an option for me right now. So I'm really, really hoping that IUIs are still an option for us. If you don't know, the catheter check is basically where they try to put the catheter through my cervix to make sure that there aren't any issues and if there are issues they try to develop a plan that they can maneuver the catheter through the cervix still so that come time for IUI there won't be any issues. So I am anticipating a little bit of pain with tomorrow's procedure because it's going to be a lot of manipulation, it's going to be you know forcing the object through the cervix and the last time and the only time I've had an IUI done it was extremely painful. So I'm really really hoping that I won't be in too much pain but I am anticipating a little bit of pain just because of my history. Now the good news is that moving forward after today, once we get our genetic testing back, we can go ahead and officially start a cycle. So as soon as the results come back, we're going to start a treatment plan. So we're really hoping that that treatment plan will consist of medicated cycles with IUI uh, insemination. It just depends, like I said, on the genetic testing and exactly what comes back. So as far as Manny is concerned, everything Everything is perfect with him. He doesn't have to do any more testing. He doesn't have to do like anything different with his quality or his count or anything like that. The only thing that we're gonna do, which is what we did before whenever we found out that the morphology was a little off, was continue the CoQ10 and the vitamin C supplements. But other than that, they said that his, his sample was perfect for an IUI deposit. So as long as our genetics come back, so pray if you're a praying person, please pray that our genetics come back, that we are not carriers of anything and that we can continue moving forward with IUI like originally planned. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm patiently waiting, but impatiently waiting, if you know what I mean. Like I'm trying to just like, okay, like step by step, like we can do this. And then the other side of me is like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I can't wait anymore. <laughs> so I'm trying to be patient with this process. It is a process for sure, but I'm excited. I'm, I'm just above all, I'm just excited about the potential of what our future could look like. But anyway, I just wanted to catch you up really quickly before diving into the vlog, because like I said, Friday was a little bit crazy. We weren't able to vlog like I wanted to. And so I just wanted to catch you up to speed before moving forward. Let's continue with the vlog. So I've been doing a few things around the house and I wanted to show you the updates that I've been doing. So I just did these without recording anything because I was just so excited about them in the moment. I just like, I had to do them and not record. So I don't have anything except for the finished product, but I will try to insert some clips on what these things look like beforehand so that you could just kind of like get an idea. But the first thing is my curtains over here. As you can see, they're beige and white now. Before they were gray and um, like a mesh, like those mesh um, Ikea curtains. At the time, whenever I bought them, I thought, oh, this is gonna look so good. This is gonna be so pretty, but it was so dark and like the curtains were so heavy. It just like made the whole area over here look like very, very dark. And so now it looks very bright, which I have to have like this light so you can see me, but it looks very bright, very light and airy. That is like my whole, like my whole thing now is 
is like light and airy. Like everything in my house was very dark and like millennial gray. We had millennial gray everywhere. We still have millennial gray, but I'm trying to update it slowly but surely. So this is one of the gray things that I took out of the house. The other like little touches that I've been doing aren't like taking gray out, but they're making it look a little bit better like with the gray. This chair needs to be fixed, which is why it's upside down, but I put this in the center. Um, if you can see this little like plant thing, it's so cute. I don't know, it just really makes it like feel lighter and like lights up the place over here. I just love it. Like these little small touches that I'm trying to like enhance what we already have rather than like getting a whole bunch of new stuff. So let's move into the living room and I'll show you what else we have. You probably already saw this in the background because I was literally just right here on the floor, but this is the updated like living room area. So it consists of this like little flower thing in the middle, which is like the same kind of thing over on the kitchen table. It's got the circle rattan, I think is what it's called, Pla placemat in the middle. It's got a candle in the middle and then this beige blanket over the gray ottoman. And I'm just trying to break up the gray basically because we have a gray tile, a gray carpet, gray ottoman, gray couches, gray pillows. I'm, I'm just trying to break up the gray. The next thing that I changed was my pillows. So these are the same pillows that came with the couches. I just bought pillow covers to go over them. And of course they're beige because I'm trying to, like I said, break up the gray but so far i think it's working i feel like it looks a little less dark in here especially whenever you like first come in the background like is still pretty dark because we have a dark floor and dark couches but it's not as dark or at least it doesn't feel as dark to me because i'm making all of these changes and i'm used to seeing like everything dark <laughs> so to me this looks much more bright All right, well, the cath check is over and it hurt. <laughs> she was pretty surprised by the amount of pain that I was in and she's like, I have just never had someone have that amount of pain like after the LEAP procedure or with the C-section scar. I was like, it's a mystery. <laughs> she wants to talk to the doctor and see exactly what he thinks we should do. She did say that there was some fluid just in the pelvis and that usually is like an indication of maybe like endometrial stuff going on, but she's not saying endometriosis. She's just saying that's something to like keep in the back of our minds just to like move forward with. She did say that basically at this point, like she's like, wow, like I, I didn't expect you to be in that much pain. I told her that if this is the type of pain that I can expect with an IUI, like I'll just breathe through it. Like I'll be fine if if they think that they can do it. Um, because my other doctor, he tried to do it, but he manipulated the spectrum a lot whenever he was trying to do the IUI. So it hurt a lot more. She said that it it appears to be going through, like the catheter appears to be going through the cervix the way that it needs to be because there's like a little indication on the catheter whenever you put it through that it needs to like go up to that certain part. She said sometimes with a C-section scar, it can, like a catheter can get stuck. They've had patients where they, you know, deliver their first baby and then they go to do the second transfer and it's a little bit more difficult because of the C-section. So we've got a lot of variables that it potentially could be. Like I said, she's going to talk to the main doctor and see exactly what they think they can do. If they think they can get through and make an IUI happen for us, I'm, I'm on board. Like, let's do it. I will... I will figure it out and I will just breathe and, and just do what I need to do so I'm not like in immense pain. That's only if they think they can make it happen. She was actually really reassuring though. She did say that Dr. I think his nickname is like Dr. P that he has had very difficult cases before and he has been able to make them work no problem. So I'm definitely hopeful still. I definitely feel, feel like I'm at a, a center now where if it's going to happen, it's going to
to happen with them. Like, I feel like they are giving me the best chance for it to happen. I don't know. She said that he might want to do a catheter check himself to see how it feels and like to see if he can navigate it. She said that they might just want to schedule my IUI with both doctors there. So one can do the ultrasound and one can do the catheter. She said either way, they're going to figure it out. Like <laughs> she was very, very optimistic and very reassuring that they will figure it out. Whatever needs to happen that they will do. Is it possible to do an IUI with, um, with ultrasound guidance? Like if it comes down to it. Okay. Well, thank you so much for the call. I spoke with Dr. Roma and that is the one who did my catheter check today. She spoke to Dr. P. They both uh, came to the conclusion that they want to try to do another catheter check. Dr. P wants to try to do it with ultrasound guidance to see exactly what is going on inside whenever they're trying to put the catheter through. They're pretty confident that it is the C-section scar that they're bumping into that's so painful for me. So what they're going to try to do with the ultrasound guidance is just navigate around it. But basically they're just trying to make sure that they can get the catheter through before moving forward with any kind of like official plans because either way if we can't get through the cervix IVF or IUI won't be won't be successful. So for now they want me to call on my next cycle day one and um, we'll schedule the next catheter check between cycle day six and cycle day 12 again. It's not pushing back the timeline that much because I was already waiting for the genetic testing to be completed. It seems like it's going to be kind of in perfect time with like if the genetics come back and we can get the catheter check done like everything should kind of come back around the same time according to my app my period is supposed to come um, around May 11th that's gonna be around the same time that the genetics should be completed so it's possible that if everything gets done at the right time we potentially might be able to do an IUI in June if everything goes well this is my thought process, not the doctor's thought process. They did not give me a timeline right now. They are very adamant about just making sure that the catheter can go through successfully, which I completely understand because that obviously is a requirement for any of the treatments to be successful. They didn't give me a timeline or anything, but she was still positive that we can make it happen. We just have to make sure that everything is going the way that it needs to go. She did confirm that if it's necessary, we can do the IUI with the ultrasound guidance to make sure that it's navigated all the way through the cervix instead of just bumping into something like the C-section scar and being stopped there. So <sighs> good news, good news. I just have to remember to breathe and take this journey slowly and not try to rush it because I, I'm like ready. I am like so ready to just be pregnant already. And I know everything in God's time. And I'm just, I'm trying to be patient and trying to trust him and just give it to him. It's such a difficult lesson to learn and to like practice, to like fully surrender. But I am trying, I am trying very hard to just fully surrender. And like whatever God intends to happen is what will happen. But I know I was talking about home updates yesterday. So I wanted to show you what I'm thinking about for my office. So up here, you know, I've got the plant and I've got like the pictures and everything. And I had a light over here, but I wasn't using it anymore because I have the two lights here. So I, I needed something to fill that space up there. Cause like it looks, it just looks off. Of course, everything had to be centered over here. Um, one for the futon and two for the closet. So what I did was got these wood shelves and I think I'm gonna hang maybe two or three up here and that way I can put like some green and some just like pretty, I don't know, decoration, something over here. That way the space is not like completely empty and it'll have like maybe maybe three shelves, maybe two shelves, I don't know, but that way it's completely across. Gives it just a little bit more dimension over here. I'm trying to make it look a little bit more balanced because I feel like right now it's very heavy to one side and then if you look at this side, it's like there's nothing back there. So just trying to even it out a little bit. Today is also Tuesday, so it is a power yoga day and I did not go at all last week and I've really, really been missing my yoga. So I definitely want to try to go to power yoga tonight. I gotta get off work, maybe do that, but definitely, definitely doing yoga tonight. <laughs> Good morning and happy Thursday. I didn't vlog anything yesterday, but I did want to just quickly wrap up this vlog. So after my conversation with my doctor on Tuesday, I was feeling a little... 
I don't know, let down, I guess is the right word. Not upset and definitely not discouraged, but I was just feeling a little, I don't know, a little let down because we have to do another catheter check and, you know, I... I'm still on this, not sure what the next steps are gonna be, not sure if we can even do an IUI, like it's just kind of very unsure right now. So I was just feeling a little, just a little sad. And I just didn't feel like thinking about it anymore or vlogging about it anymore. And I just needed some time to just process everything. So that's what I did yesterday and, and just let myself kind of chill. I did end up going to power yoga on Tuesday, which was awesome. I really, really enjoy going to yoga. The power yoga is intense, specifically on Tuesdays are my only power yoga days, and they are intense. Like I, I feel it in my shoulders, but I'm getting a good workout in. So I definitely want to continue the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday schedule. Today's Thursday, and I will be going to yoga this afternoon, but it's just going to be a regular yoga, not a power yoga. So I'm looking forward to that, but just something to, you know, keep my body moving, keep myself active. As far as TTC goes, they told me to just wait till my first day of my next cycle and give them a call and I will be able to go in and we'll have to do the cath check and kind of go from there. So right now we're just kind of on on hold, just kind of waiting. I'm fine with it. It's okay. It's not where I want to be. Obviously, I want to be moving forward, but it makes me happy that my doctors are so thorough with this and so attentive and they don't want to just like, oh, well, we'll just see what happens. They're they're very thoughtful with the process and I'm grateful for that. Obviously, I'm excited and want this process to go as quickly as possible, but at the same time, I appreciate the steps and the measures that they're taking to make sure that everything's the way that it needs to be before moving forward with anything so that we have the best chance of success whenever it does come for transfer or IUI. So it is several days later and I realized I never finished this vlog, so I just wanted to end this vlog by saying any new developments that happen in my TTC journey, you know that I will share them with you. I want to say thank you so much for the love and the support that I been having on this journey and sharing this journey again. If you don't know, there was one point in time where we were doing this and we took a huge break and now we are back on this journey. So it has definitely been a long road and it is something that with the trying to conceive journey, you really have to take day by day, step by step. And I'm trying to remind myself that and trying to continue to give myself grace so that I can get through this journey and not go crazy. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I love you so much and I hope to see you next week. Bye.